Elk Lake Heritage Preserve, an ecologically diverse sportsman's preserve set in the rolling glacial moraine of rural Grant County, just north of Hoffman, Minnesota. We caught up with owners Ed and Annette Loeffler on a busy day in September. So Ed, can you tell us how this all got started? How long have you been in business? For uh, 19 years I taught. Uh, I started down in Walnut Grove, moved up to when Hoffman was just Hoffman, and then went Hoffman, Kensington, and then finally West Central area. And then uh, I decided to take a five year leave. Uh, the big part was because a guy by the name of Gary Peterson offered me a chance to start a preserve with him, and that started in 95. And at that point, we just kind of took off. And I was telling you a little bit about it before. We just we didn't have much of a mission statement. We just took off and started building, and things have worked out fairly good. We probably have around 400 uh, acres that we can get people out in the in the fields and hunt. And we've got big fields, small fields, tall grass, short grass, uh, and I bring that up because a lot of guys come in with their dogs. And my first question is. What size field would you like? What kind of grass would you like? And as a dog trainer, I, I know that sometimes they want something particular. So that's my first question. And then we also have three lakes on the preserve. Uh, and I'm going to say they average probably 100 to 150 acres. Two of those we fish. The other one's just basically a stock pond, which uh, in the spring, a uh, guy by the name of Jim Bozik takes care of all our lakes. But in the spring, he strips the walleyes and takes the eggs, hatches them, and I think we talked about that earlier, uh, and raises them to fry, to fingerlings, brings some back and sells them to other people that want them in the county. We've got pheasant and chucker hunting, uh, we've got sporting clays, five stand, uh, along with, you know, with the hunting and, and uh, shooting, we offer a lot of, I give lessons myself, try to get kids going on the right direction. Uh, we've got lodging. The main lodge has full cooking facilities. It's got two refrigerators and a nice spacious dining area, a spacious living area. So that's, that's where people can do their entertaining and such. The bunkhouse is set up primarily for sleeping. There's, there's just a real small social area um, and it doesn't have cooking facilities. Um, and in our clubhouse, we have a meeting room that accommodates up to 25 um, pretty comfortably. And that's used by a lot of corporate groups and, and uh, different groups that, that want a little party or a little gathering and, and uh, we also have, this is where the hunters come or the shooters come to get, get registered and get started. And we also have an active geezer group in the morning that, that has coffee just about every day and sometimes in the afternoon. And that always keeps us abreast of everything that's going on. <laughs> and, and, and a vital part of our, of our business actually. We also have a RV site where people can come in and uh, hook up. We've got electricity, water, dump station, everything they need. We've got the you know, outdoor kennels, indoor outdoor kennels that people can hold their dogs here. Uh, we, we don't let them in the main lodge as far as bringing dogs in. We, in our bunkhouse, we put a cement floor in there so the people that have to have their dogs with them at night may bring their dogs in with them. But up at the main lodge, it's all carpeted, so we try to keep them out of that building. And other than that, like I said, I'm training dogs all the time, I've year round, and uh, it just works in beautifully with the business. On the day we visited Elk Lake Heritage Preserve, all the FFA clubs from the region were holding a special field day there. Dustin Steenblock was one of the event organizers. Uh, Dustin Steenblock, I'm the Ashby Ag and FFA advisor in Ashby, Minnesota. Uh, today we're hosting an event here at Elk Lake that basically holds about 200 kids from local FFA organizations ranging anywhere from Fergus Falls 
to Albany Sox Center Holdingford down to Hancock Morse area. Uh, we typically have about 100 kids shooting sporting clays today and then some various events, uh, archery and orienteering. Uh, we do this every year and hold it at three different rotations in the area. Uh, just trying to keep kids basically uh, the skills uh, that are necessary to have a, a good sportsmanship in the field and with wildlife and things like that and keeping that in the school. It just kind of comes down to um, the skills that the kids learn today and, and kind of hone a little bit as they go throughout the, the years in FFA. Uh, really I think go with them for a lifelong type of uh, trip. So. And Ed and Eddie here at the Elk Lake have been gracious enough to do it every three years. And wonderful sight, as, as anyone can see, as they come in the, in the driveway. So we're uh, glad to have them and, and what they do what they do. It's kind of nice. So. Stakes with the fastest time will actually be the winning team. Uh -huh. So they get a chance to shoot at different um, shooting parks, and then if they like it, they can obviously it's a feather in their cap. They they can come and hopefully get repeat business from sure. the students from year to year. So. so where are you kids from? Fergus Falls. Oh, okay. You having fun? Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, man, I wish I could have gone on a field trip like this when I was in high school. <laughs> yeah, we were all practice shooting yesterday, and uh, one of the parents said, man, I used to get into trouble for leaving school to go do that type of stuff. And now we have field days that they can go out and actually not get into trouble to do these things. Right. Well... It is a great op a learning opportunity. It is a great learning opportunity. It gives some students something that they've never done before, a yep. chance to go out and experience yep. some things in the field. So. so what have you guys done today that's new? Uh, we haven't done anything yet. <laughs> oh, you, you're just starting? Yeah, yeah. we're oh, just starting. Oh, <laughs> okay. Is this your first time out here? Yep. yep. And you're all in, what, what's your name in grade? I'm Carly Davenport and I'm in 10th grade. I'm Gunnar Odette and I'm a senior. Tyler Schleski and I'm a senior. Great. Well, I hope you have a great day. And good luck with your team. Thanks. It was a very windy day. But that didn't stop these kids from trying at the archery range. And it looks like they still had a lot of fun. Youth is extremely important. And I mean, you hear it time and time again where, you know, people are trying to get youth going and get into the hunting instead of sitting on the digitals and iPods and everything else that they have, which I think is really important. And you know, we have youth hunts. We just had one here last weekend. I think Pope County was up here. Uh, I know Stevens County sends gift certificates up, which I take the kids out on an individual basis and guide them. Uh, shooting, you know, we give kids, we promote kids to come out and shoot sporting clays in five stand and we give them a break on the clays as far as cost. Uh, anything that we can do to get them out and, and get them oriented to the outdoors and hunting and also just shooting. They don't have to hunt all the time. They can just come out and shoot and shooting properly. And we encourage gun training, kids, all people to take gun training uh, and especially the youth. And one of the things that we do here is we make sure that the kids all have their gun training permits before they can do any activities here as far as dealing with the shooting end of it because we think that's extremely important. Activities at Elk Lake are not exclusively for men or students, as Nettie explains. Well, we do get a lot of women shooting and hunting out here. It's, it seems like it's becoming more and more um, fun for them. And we've got a mixed couples sporting clays league, which, which of course the gals participate in and, and seem to really enjoy. Uh, we also have a lot of gals that do girl weekends in the lodge 
and they do quilting and stamping up or scrapbooking and just have a ball. And we always think that it's just like the song goes, put a girl in it. It's more fun when we've got gals around. <laughs> so. For a weekend. The, bunk, the main lodge has 12 beds, so we have oftentimes gals where the daytime group is a little larger than that, but the nighttime in the lodge is limit of 12. And then we also have 10 beds in the bunkhouse, so we can accommodate. We've got 22 beds here. We close on Tuesdays, or we try to close on Tuesdays. As you saw yesterday, we weren't closed. But uh, other than that, we're open. We offer, you know, the fishing. Uh, we'll we'll keep fishing, obviously, open water now. And then when it freezes up, we have ice fishing. Then there's a short period of time where we actually take a break. As anybody in Minnesota knows, it's pretty tough to go out on the ice once it gets a little soft. And then we start that up again. From, uh, say, March till the end of August we do a lot of sporting clays shooting. We do five stand league in March and April and then we start our summer league in May and that goes through August. So that's the heavy sporting clays season and then we shift into primarily hunting with sporting clays on the side um, starting September and we do hunting through through probably March and sometimes into April. This time of year we get a lot of people in staying in their lodges like they, they were, we just had a corporate group in. They stayed, they hunted, they fished, they shot clays, kicked back and relaxed, had a big barbecue, you name it. So a little bit of everything we try to offer the people that come here and, and we aim to please. That's our main thing.